everyone, here we are up to part two of Marshall. So this time we're going to be working on these little circle blocks here. Um, it, they're appliqued and you can choose whatever method you like to appliqued. So this time it's quite an easy section for you to complete. Um, this is what you will have done as part one. So many of you, I've been seeing all the posts on social media, so many of you have completed this already. Well done. So these are the blocks that we're working on this month. So our background squares are cut from um, the dark circulars or the lighter colour in the lollies, the coloured lollies. Um, and then our circles are cut from the lollies and from the grey lollies. Um, and just so long as you get some contrast, dark or you can use the darker fabric or the lighter one, so long as you've got some contrast between your background and your circle. Um, so <clears throat> the templates, these are little mylar templates. I am absolutely in love with them. Um, and I just thought we would run through how to use these. These squares are cut at four and a half inches um, and you need, I should have done the maths before this, shouldn't I? Um, it's all written in your pattern anyway. So you'll have all the instructions. <laughs> So what I do is I just get my fabric and I'm going to pop the circle on the wrong side. Now I'm not going to be too fussy about seam allowance. Because this is quite a large circle, I tend to leave a relatively generous seam allowance. I'm just going to trace around the edge lightly just so that I can see the circle there. And then I'm going to cut them out hope you can see the line there, just roughly cut, leaving a generous quarter inch seam allowance. So here's my drawn line here. And as you can see, I've just rough cut that and that's fine. You don't have to be fussy and this makes it just awfully quick. Um, just one little hint, when we've cut our circles out, you might just have some little scraps like this. Don't throw them out because next um, part of the quilt, we'll be cutting little one inch strips and little uh, squares. So you'll be able to use up all these little pieces in uh, the next part of the quilt. I then take, take that circle and I tie a generous knot in my thread. I come up on the right side of my fabric. So I've got the wrong side facing me so I can see what I'm doing, but the knot on this side, bring my needle up and through. And then I just do a tiny running stitch, all right? So I'll just show you that. So when I start, I have a knot in the end of my thread and make it quite a generous knot. And I come up, I have the fabric face, wrong side facing me so that I can see this line but I like to come up so that the knot is on the right side of the fabric. And I'm going to do a fine running stitch in the middle of the seam allowance. So not on this line, but right in the middle. And it is just a little running stitch. And I'm going to go all the way around the circle. And when I get back to the knot, I'm going to take that last stitch, come up on once again on the right side of my work and cut leaving a tail because we need to gather that up. So once you've got your stitch all the way around with your little tail, you're just going to take your circle, pop it in the center and just gently draw that thread around. Now this is the reason that I like to do quite a fine stitch when I'm doing my running stitch because you get a nice even gather. If you do a very large stitch when you're doing that running stitch, you'll find that it will pleat and you'll get just some little um, sharp edges. You won't get a beautiful fine gather like so. All right, so once I've got it gathered up, I then go to my favorite product, Flatter. Okay, Flatter's by the Soak Company and um, it has no starch in it, but it gives a beautiful crisp edge when you press with it. And the reason I love this with no starch is because I'm going to hand stitch these on to my background square. I don't want the stiffness in the fabric. So I just think this is one of the best products that's come on the market in a very, very, very long time. I use it for all sorts of things. And for anyone who's ever done a class with me, you'll know that I'm always talking about flatter. So I just give a little 
spray and then with my iron on a cool setting so I'm going to have my iron on synthetic and a dry iron no steam and I'm just going to pop that on and just leave it sit for a little while until the fabric is dry so all I'm going to do now that it's dry is just where the loose tail is I just undo that a little take the circle out and then just gently pull that thread so that the seam allowance is just nicely sitting nice and flat okay and now we're just going to center this so the dark grays are going to go onto our colored backgrounds and we're just going to center that circle now some of you will be clever enough that you can just know straight away others of you may like to just get your little ruler and make sure that you're the same distance and it works out to be um, five eighths of an inch from the edge of your circle to the cut edge that was a pretty good guess on my part that I got that sitting there nicely like so and then you can just pop a couple of pins in there to hold it or you can use um, a glue or a glue stick and put a couple of little dabs of glue in behind to hold it if you don't like to pin it. So we've just got this pinned and now I'm ready to stitch it down. Um, I love Aurifil 80 weight for applique, so that's what I'm going to be using. Um, it comes in such a fantastic range of colors um, and you'll find that your stitches will just vary beautifully. So I've just tied a knot in the end of my thread and I'm going to come up through my background fabric and just into the fold, that beautifully um, pressed crease. I'm going to take a little side step stitch into my background fabric, angle my needle at the back. So I'm traveling forward at the back of my work, coming up into the fold. Hope you can all see this and I'm just going to work my way all the way around that circle all right until I finish the whole outer once you have finished I won't stitch it on all the way because it will be very um, time-consuming for you um, You'll notice that this is the, the gray fabric on the colored background is actually the little donut circle. So you have a little template that looks like this. All right. I find the easiest and most accurate way to get this to work is to applique the full circle on first. Then I'm just going to pop that little circle over the top and with a pencil that's contrasting, so it can be your gray lead or you might like to use one of the colored sew lines, I'm just going to draw that inner circle on there. And this will mean that it's beautifully centered and you don't have to be measuring and what have you. Um, <clears throat> once I've got that drawn on, all I'm going to do now is just making sure that I don't clip my background square, of course, because you've got that is separate the two out, pop a little clip in there and then I'm just going to cl clip up and around once again just leaving my seam allowance and I'll just cut that whole center piece out leaving seam allowance all the way around and then I'm just going to clip because this is an inner curve I'm just going to clip at roughly quarter inch but when you start to applique you will know if that is enough um, I'm just going to pop a couple of extra pins in there to hold it as I said this would all be stitched um, 
and then when you start to applique this you're just going to flick that little seam allowance in and under and you're going to stitch this inner curve down all the way around okay and so you just then get this beautiful little donut so you will have some squares that are a full circle on the grey spot background, on the circulus background, and you will have some of the coloured lollies with some of the grey lollies as the donut on top. Now we're not going to, these will all be stitched together as part of the quilt, but we're not going to do that right away because I just find to get an even mix of uh, print and pattern, it's easier to, to stitch these together after you've made month five and got that all together. So we'll be stitching these together in month six when we come to uh, put the whole quilt together. Enjoy.